Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my five star predictions. Now this type of video, sort of tag, trend, whatever you want to call it, was started by Mercy's Bookish Musings. I will link her channel down below. You should check her out. But today, basically, I'm going to choose a few books from my shelves that I think are five star quality. To make it even more fun, most of the books I've chosen are thriller or horror novels, so it's going to be extra fun. Let's get started. First things first, I'm going to start with a book that I've owned for a while, I would say a few months, if not maybe like a year. Positive, I'm going to love it because it's prolific, and that is Uzo Maki by uh, Junji Ito. This is a graphic novel that's like horrifying. It's about a town that's cursed. The town is haunted by a pattern, Uzomaki the Spiral, the hypnotic secret shape of the world. This bizarre masterpiece horror manga is now available in a single volume. Fall into a whirlpool of terror. Bit. That sounds amazing. Looked through some of the images and they aren't fun. They're not cute. They're actually kind of horrifying. There's just nipples everywhere. You know, like, why does that look like weird? Why do I feel gross after looking at that, you know? It's like really fun and fresh and fabulous. <laughs> we just, we just love, it's creepy, wonderful. But I think it's going to change the way I look at horror, the way I look at like illustration because Junji Ito, from what I understand, takes great care and detail into his work. And so I only expect the best from this. Very excited to get to this. Who knows when I'll do it. I know I want to read these five star predictions within the next few months so that I can make a whole other video detailing my journey. Let's go into like a thriller for a moment. As you may know, I loved The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. Like it caught me by surprise with how much I loved it. It was so fucking good. Also read Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware. I also now at this point own all of her books. Um, and so another prediction that I'm making is The Woman in Cabin 10 by Ruth Ware. I'm hoping that because I loved Turn of the Key as much as I did, I will also love this. This from what I understand is about a woman, she's on a cruise. She's there to fucking party, dude. She's ready to get fucked up. She wants to relax. She wants to just like have a little bit of me time. When she sees people throwing another passenger overboard. And so her, her party is just dead. It's over. I don't know if you guys have met my other cat. <laughs> this is Bug. Say hi, Bug. Say hi to the internet. Hi. He likes to bite, so. That's fun. Party is ruined. She's not having that much fun anymore because no one believes her. People say that this passenger doesn't exist. They say it never happened. There's no proof. So yeah, we don't know as a reader if she's insane or if there's someone on the cruise ship that's just like trying to get away with murder. I'm hoping that's a five star read. I'm also really hoping to enjoy The Girl in Red by Christina Henry. As you may know also, I loved Lost Boy by her. I thought it was super good and I'm hoping that this just goes even further than Lost Boy did. And Lost Boy went pretty far. Like Lost Boy wasn't playing around. I'm hoping that this book is just brutal and gruesome. This is a retelling of The Little Red Riding Hood and it says it's not safe for anyone alone in the woods. There are predators that come out at night, critters and coyotes, snakes and wolves. But the woman in the red jacket has no choice. Not since the crisis came, it decimated the population and sent those survive who survived fleeing into quarantine camps that serve as breeding grounds for death, destruction and disease. She's just a woman trying not to get killed in a world that doesn't look anything like the one she grew up in. The one that was perfectly sane and normal and boring until three months ago. As you may know, I love survival stories and I also love post-apocalyptic stuff if it's done well. So I'm hoping that this serves me in all the best ways. I think Kat and I are gonna buddy read this in February. A few books that I haven't hauled yet but I'm still gonna mention here. One of them being Error Rat. Ararat. I don't know how to pronounce that title. I think it's pronounced Ararat. 
but this is by Christopher Golden. It says, when an earthquake reveals a secret cave hidden inside Mount Ararat in Turkey, a daring newly engaged couple are determined to be the first ones inside. And what they discover will change everything. So basically, I think they get into this cave and then they get trapped and then they also realize that they're not alone in this cave, that there's something else in the cave and it's about to be spooky, bitch. It's about to be spooky. I'm so excited for this. I, the moment I read the synopsis, I was like, I have to have that because books are escapism, you know, and I know for a fact that I ain't never going to go into some creepy ass cave. And so I need to escape and pretend like I'm going to through this book, you know? Really, really hoping that that book comes through with it. Another book that I haven't hauled but still I'm going to talk about is Camp Slaughter by Sergio Gomez. This is a horror novel that I saw Rachel from Shades of Orange. God bless her soul. She's like literally the angel of this community. Anyway, so I saw her talking about this, I believe. And I remember I think she said that she really liked it. I love slaughter books <laughs> it's a local legend no one is sure if this camp slaughter place is real or not but a group of college kids renting out a cabin deep in the woods of pennsylvania will soon realize the truth they'll realize the danger too or rather the cannibal out in the woods will bring the danger to them cannibals college kids that are fucking just stupid probably in the cabin in the middle of the woods like what more do you want like take my money guy take it just take my money I'm so excited for this I hope that it's gross I hope that it's terrifying I hope it plays out like like one of those bad horror movies but like where it's like aware of itself maybe I don't know I don't know what to expect from this I've never heard of Sergio Gomez before but I'm hoping it's good. I've had this next book on my TBR for like maybe like three years, two or three years at least, at least. And that is Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. I don't know if this is a thriller. I don't know if it's horror. I don't know if it's science fiction, but I have wanted to read it for so long and I literally just need to bite the bullet. I'm going to read this book in 2020. If anything, I should give myself like like a due date for these books, you know? I should have these books read, let's say by... I'm gonna give myself three months to read all these books. So let's say that I should have finished all these books by the end of May. So by the end of May, we're gonna have a definitive answer on whether I actually am gonna love this book. Because I, I've always felt like I would love it based on the things that I've heard and seen. Who knows? I'm just very hopeful for this. By the way, this is about a woman who uh, hitchhikes into the vehicles of men and I think murders them or eats them or something. I'm not entirely sure. It says, at once humane and horrifying, under the skin is a heart-thumping ride through the dangerous territory where moral instincts and the boundaries of compassion collide. I'm so excited for this. I can't even. Another author that I've read before and loved, uh, and I'm hoping that this one is the same, and that is Scott Smith, specifically with A Simple Plan. Scott Smith wrote The Ruins. I fucking love The Ruins, dude. You know that. You have to know that. Like, I talk about it 100% of the time. So this is his only other book. This, I believe, is, is actually his debut novel. And from what I understand, it seems like two brothers come upon this like wrecked plane and in the plane they find I believe two, four million dollars they find four million dollars in this plane and it's two brothers what could go wrong what could go wrong and apparently it just gets gruesome and crazy everyone loves this and I'm hoping that it's that it's as good if not better than the ruins not that the ruins could ever get better in my eyes but I hope it's good and I'm very very excited for this. I have this like really dinky mass market paperback but I'll make do. I've got two books left to talk about and those are The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. Something about this just screams five star to me you know. Something about this just says to me that this is gonna be good and gruesome and captivating. I believe that it's a science fiction horror novel. 
So this book is about a woman who is on an expedition. She's gone to a foreign planet and she's a caver and she finds herself on a terrifying psychological and emotional journey for survival. It's compared to the Martian and gravity and annihilation. I do love Annihilation. I never finished it. I should. But anyway, so I loved Annihilation. I loved Gravity. I love the sound of this. I, I think it's going to be crazy and scary, but also like a little bit emotional, you know? Like I might cry. I don't know. I have really, really, really high hopes for this. The last book that I'm going to talk about is one that I've gotten recently, and that is Blackwater by Michael McDowell. This is a chunker. I know very little about this. From what I can understand, it's about a woman who moves to this town and she's like hot shit. All the dudes want to be with her. And so she, but she knows that she's going to marry this one dude. And so they, they're like in love or whatever. But then he realizes that she's hiding something. It says on the inside, but who's hidden life carries her slender white body deep beneath the waters of the Perito River. There she takes on her other self, a creature whispered about in stories that have chilled the residents of Perito for generations. Some of those who observe her rituals in the river will never be seen again. So it seems like she's into some dark magic shit. All I know is that this is like the creme de la creme of southern gothic horror. And we know that Michael McDowell does not let a bitch down. So I'm hoping only good things from this. And I think it's going to be a five star read. It's huge. Like, I think the audiobook is like 25 to 30 hours long. But I love Michael McDowell. So I'm okay with spending that much time just like just reading, you know, that was my five star predictions in terms of horror and thriller novels. Let me know down below if you thought any of these books are five stars or if you've read them, let me know what you actually thought of them and what you actually gave them in terms of star ratings. I would be super interested to know. Don't forget as well to hit subscribe because we talk about spooky shit and scary shit and creepy shit right here. Don't forget to like this video um, and thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next one. Bye!